Hey guys, Corey here, and welcome to part two of our series on aluminum extrusion. Now, I hope you've already seen the first part kind of all about the profiles, the different sizes of the actual 8020 aluminum extrusion. In this video, we're going to talk all about the fasteners, right? All the things that you attach to the aluminum extrusion to connect it together. And I have you some helpful tips on how to find some of the things, how to save some money. And we're going to talk all about fasteners in this video. So if you haven't already watched part one, go back and see that. Otherwise, let's dive right in. Okay, so let's talk all about fasteners because that is what you actually use to attach this stuff together. Now let's have a look at the AD20 website so we can really kind of dive into the differences between all the different types of fasteners. Okay, so on the 8020.net site, you have this fastener section here. And if you look at this, you will very quickly get overwhelmed. I mean, there's like a thousand different fasteners in here. Basically every part you could possibly need to work with um, is all on the 8020 website. So let me break it down and make it really simple for you because this was hard to get my head wrapped around. So there's lots of different ways to connect your framing together, right? You have simple angle brackets like this, where it's just a little angle piece, and that's how you attach pieces together. You have uh, sliding T-nuts. T-nuts are the screws or the bolts that you screw into inside of your framing. Um, you have three-way inserts. You have uh, like poles even, like the ends of the, of the framing is all drilled out, and it's all very confusing just because there's so many options. And this is, in my opinion, by the hardest part of this entire process is figuring out your fasteners. So let's break it down into kind of three categories, right? You have the angles, you have the nuts, and you have the screws, okay? So let's first talk about angles. So on the 8020 website, we have several different types of angles. First, we have these like simple two hole angle brackets where there's, it's just a simple L bracket and it's got two holes. And there's lots of different variations of this, like with four holes, um, and there's even six holes and above, right? So if you have a, if you have larger pieces that you're working with, you can use lots of different simple angle brackets. So these are really the simple, the most simple there is. Uh, you also have the gusseted kind. Is that how you say that? Gusseted? I'm not really sure if that's how you say that or not. But these are like a little more sturdy um, and they uh, they have this like angle in between the L bracket. Now this is a gusseted kind. And again, you have the two and the four hole kinds, like lots of different versions of this. And then lastly, you have like the external angles, right? Like so this would go on the outside of your angle. So instead of being an L bracket like this, right? This one is on the outside and there's lots of different hold versions of these as well, right? So those are your angles. Now let's talk about T-nuts because T-nuts are a little bit different. Now the T-nuts are the, it's the little, um, it's a little bit that, that you slide inside of your rail, right? So here's a T-nut here. It's a simple little uh, metal piece and that will go inside of your rail. You just slide it in the end there and now it is like inside of there, right? Now T-nuts is actually what you screw into. Like, so if I have to attach my angle bracket to this aluminum extrusion, the T-nut is what you attach it to. And because it's inside the slot, it like pulls it tight and um, that's how you attach stuff to the aluminum extrusion. Now there's lots of different kinds of these as well, which is also very confusing. So let's talk about T-nuts really quick. Um, first off, you have several kinds, right? You have slide in, which is what it sounds like. They come in from the side. You slide them into the uh, the framing. Um, now, this is a kind of a permanent connection because once I attach something to this and I've slid it in from the end, say I put a vertical piece right here. Um, once I've slid this in, you can't slide anything else in past it, right? So it's kind of a permanent thing. So you have to make sure you get all of your pieces in there before you commit to attaching them. Otherwise, you're going to have to take a lot of things off to slide new pieces in, right? Just the slide in kind. They slide in from the ends. Um, you have drop in kind, which is kind of what it sounds like. You can drop them in from the top. So even if I have one already in there and it's permanent, I can drop it in from the top and we're going to look at those. And lastly, you have some studs. So there's lots of different types of T-nuts and let's kind of look at some of these. Okay. So first let's talk about the slide in kind of T-nuts. All right. Um, now this is what they look like, right? So this is the economy kind. Um, the economy type of T-nuts are these like little cheap black kind. They're also in silver, I believe, and they're really simple. It's just a flat piece of metal that is threaded. You also have the standard kind, which is a, a little stronger. Now, this one is more of the shape. You can kind of see here. This one looks like it's more of the shape of the framing itself. Um, and, that, and those are a little bit more expensive, right? So this says they're 86 cents a piece. This says they're 23 cents a piece. 
Um, so this is the economy and the standard slide in type of T-nuts, right? So you have to slide them in from the ends. Now, one important thing to know about these um, T-nuts is all of these slide in, really all the T-nuts in general, all the parts come in fairly like standard sizes, right? There's only a couple sizes that will fit this. When I say sizes, I mean the threaded hole that's on the fastener itself, right? Um, so you have your SAE sizes, there's uh, 1 quarter 20, it's, it's 1 fourth dash 20, there's 1032, which is a little smaller, and there's 832, which is even smaller than that, right? Now those are the standard sizes, you can look up those dimensions online to see exactly what that means. Um, but long story short, they're standard and not metric sizes. Now there are some metric sizes, all this stuff comes in as well. The most common are M4, M5, and M6 screws. Um, and again, I'm talking about the thread of the fastener itself, right? Because um, you can't just buy any screws. You have to match it to the thread. And that's kind of why it's hard to um, just buy like any, any fasteners themselves. You have to get stuff that will fit in the threads. Okay, so now let's talk about the drop-in kind, right? Now, like I said, the drop-in type of uh, T-nuts, you can drop them in from the top, right? So if I have something already screwed in and attached here, I can just slide it in and it will fit in from the top, right? You don't have to put it in from the end like you do with your standard slide-in T-nuts, okay? So you have kind of uh, uh, two kinds of drop-in slash slide-in, and that's what they are. There's drop-in, that's what these are right here. They're roll-in, you see you got this little pin this little ball spring right here, and that allows it to sort of lock it into place. And then you also have your drop in. So when you drop this in, it will turn inside of the um, inside of the aluminum. So like these little winged pieces are the opposite of how you turned it in, and um, sort of locks it into place. So here's actually a little demonstration. You can see you. So you drop it in right there, and then it turns, and then it gets locked in just like that. Um, whereas your um, you know, your, your drop in or your, it's your roll in, I guess is what these called. You can see how that works. Like you just roll it into the aluminum extrusion, right? So it's useful to kind of use a combination of these because um, what's going to happen is in what everybody does is when you're using your slide in only, you slide them in and then you lock it all in place and you realize that you've, you realize that you've screwed up because um, now you can't get past this. You have to disassemble it to slide more things in. It's such a huge pain in the butt, right? So it's good to have the slide in kind and also the drop in, um, slash, uh, well, the drop in or roll in kind because then you can like just not have to take anything apart when you make a mistake and you need to add something else to your aluminum. And then lastly, you have um, you have what's called the stud uh, kind. Now studs are what they sound like. It's just this like little bolt, and you can put a uh, a nut on top of that. Now I didn't use any of these, but you know that I know that those exist. Now theoretically, you could probably use a carriage bolt, kind of like these, right? Because they have that sort of square edging that you need to fit into the aluminum extrusion, like the uh, like the slot, right? It needs to be kind of square so it'll fit inside of this little bit right here and i guess carriage bolts would work i've heard people doing that i didn't actually test that myself just because it's a little too permanent in my opinion so um, but theoretically that might work and could probably save you some money now the last little part of this equation is like i said the screws right we've talked about your angles we've talked about your t-nuts and now let's talk about your screws right now um, you have to have standard screws as well because they have to fit inside those t-nuts and like i said you have standard sizes your sae sizes of a quarter 20 1032 and 832 um, and then also your metric sizes m4 m5 and m6 now i'm getting your screws right is a huge pain in the butt. Um, if you don't buy them directly from like T-Nuts or 8020, it's really hard to find all the pieces uh, that will be compatible, right? Because if, you're, if your hole is too small for your screw, right, you can't use uh, the angle, right? So you have two options. You can either find a different screw or a different angle, okay? So let's say we go the different screw route. Well, if we choose a different screw, now we have to have a different T-nut because the T-nuts are all pre-threaded to fit your screws. So long story short, you have to use standard sizes when you're making all your parts work together, which is why it's just way easier to buy your fasteners like all from the same place, like from T-nuts, like I did. Now it's also challenging because you have to get the length right, right? Because if you have too long of a screw, it will not fit inside of the slot. 
Um, I actually found this to be the case. I used half inch screws that I bought from T-Nuts and they ended up being a little bit too long. So the butt end of the screw, like it went, when it, once I attached it in there, it bumped up against the bottom of the channel, right? And when that happens, you can't properly lock your screws into place. So there's a lot of things you have to consider when you're buying these, um, when you're buying screws or really any of your fasteners because it all has to be nice and compatible. Now let's look at the T-Nuts website to see all the different types of screws, right? So you're by far your most common are these socket head screws. Now that's like these right here. We can open that up in a new tab. Um, these are like your socket head screws. You, if you've ever seen these before, these are like this little grooved edge. You can kind of use your, use your fingers to kind of screw it in, but it does stick out a lot because the cap is so large. Then you also have like your button head screws. And this is what I went with. Uh, button head screws are really simple. It's just a tiny little screw with a, a little uh, button, little mushroom top on it, um, just like a typical machine screw. And it has a little hex hole there. You can use like a hex screwdriver or a uh, Allen wrench for, um, and that's the most common type of screws. Okay, so we've talked all about the individual pieces of the equation, right? You have your angles, you have your T-nuts, and you have your screws, but how do you actually go and buy these things? So let's talk about that. Um, so if you're playing around on the 8020 website, the first thing you're gonna realize is they are insanely expensive, insanely expensive. In fact, this is by far the most expensive part of the entire project is buying all of these fasteners. So let's have a look at the 8020 website and we will show you what I mean. Uh, so here we go. This is uh, part number 4108. This is a simple two-hole angle bracket. And you see this is $2.97. And you're like, okay, no big deal. A box of those is $3. No. This is a single angle is almost $3. So they are incredibly expensive. You need hundreds of these if you're going to do a project like this. So, I mean, like you will spend $500 just on your fasteners, which is insane. Okay, so let's talk about all the ways that you can save money on your fasteners when you're working with 8020 aluminum extrusion. So the first thing um, is the angles. So the first thing, it may be an obvious thing, um, you can cut your own angles. You can cut your own angles out of aluminum angle. Now I bought several pieces of aluminum angle and I did this and I tried it. I saw it in some other videos and there's some advantages and disadvantages to cutting your own little um, aluminum angle. So here you can see this was a long piece of aluminum angle and I just cut it and then used the drill press to drill the holes in it. So I made myself a smaller version of this one. This is a real one from 8020. It looks very similar. So there are some pros and cons to this method of cutting your own. So let's talk about pros first. I guess the most obvious pro is this is the cheapest by far. Um, if you buy your own piece from Home Depot, it's not very expensive. I think it's like 15 bucks for like eight feet of it. That's cheap as you can possibly get. But the cons I think of this pro process like really far outweigh um, the, the pros. Would I do this again? Probably, uh, just because I'm a cheapskate and it saved me a bunch of money, but it was a big pain in the butt. And let me talk about some of the cons. So first off, these are really ugly. I'm not sure if you can tell this from the video, but like my holes are not very pretty, right? I'm not sure if you can see this, but like there's like lots of little pieces um, there's lots of little pieces of burrs on the holes, right? So they're scratchy and you scratch your hands on them and stuff. Um, there's also leftover from the cutting. You can kind of see it in the uh, in the corner there. There's leftover piece um, of the little burr. Like they're ugly, right? And there's lots of things to catch your fingers on. Um, they're not very clean at all, even with brand new blades and everything that I use. They're, they're just kind of ugly. Your holes are never exactly perfect because even I use a drill press, my holes are still not perfect. So they're ugly. Second thing I'll mention is that cutting your own aluminum angle is way harder than you think it is. Um, like I said earlier, I cut a bunch of this with my miter saw and almost cut my fingers off. Um, it's really hard to get it right. It's hard to get your cuts right. It's hard to get your holes right. Even if you measure it all and mark it all exactly, it's pretty challenging to get little tiny inch pieces of aluminum angle. I will also say this project was incredibly messy. That's sort of the third con of this. Is You know what, I just had one of these little flakes break off in my hand. I gotta make sure I dispose of this. So you end up with all of these tiny little bitty flakes uh, that come off when you are cutting this stuff and it gets everywhere. It gets all over the floor, it gets all over your clothing, it gets everywhere and they stick to you and they're sharp as a razor blade. I mean, these tiny little pieces that get everywhere, it's incredibly messy. It's not like you can just blow it off in your driveway. You kind of have to suck it up and you can't even use a magnet to get it up because aluminum is not magnetic, okay? I will also say that I found this to be uh, pretty dangerous. Like I said, I almost cut my fingers off um, cutting this stuff before. So it's a definitely a dangerous process. 
Uh, another con, you have to have special tools if you're going to do this. Um, I mean, it's not like you can just cut this aluminum angle with a skill saw. That would be incredibly reckless. I mean, you would cut your leg off doing that. Don't use a skill saw to cut this stuff. Um, I use a drill press to drill the holes. I don't think I would attempt it with, uh, with a normal drill. I mean, your drill bit will just ride all over the place. Um, I use a drill press, so you need you need tools. Lastly, the last con I will say about cutting your own aluminum that I did not think this would be the case at all. This is actually incredibly weak. Um, I found that when I was working with it and I was using some of these angles to attach all my framing together, these things bend really, really easy, which was pretty alarming. I definitely wouldn't use these for weight bearing functions. Like on my bench, when I went to put them together, I was like standing it up and it like several of them bent all at the same time. And I was like, oh my God, that is bad. And that is when I went to using the gusseted kind um, rather than just the angled kind. All right, so the next idea I had for saving some money were just to buy some generic little angles, little L-bracket angles from like Home Depot or Amazon, that sort of thing. And there are pros and cons for that as well. So let's talk about that. So let's talk about pros first. Um, these are pretty cheap, right? Um, not from Home Depot. You can't buy these from Home Depot. They're really expensive if you buy them from Home Depot. It's like $5 for a four pack or something like that, which is pretty expensive. But on Amazon, you can get a pack of 50 for like 10 bucks. I mean, it's pretty cheap. Um, you know, so like I said, they're they're cheap materials. Um, they're also really sturdy because these are steel. They're not aluminum, right? I can't bend this at all, and they will not bend. Um, these are really nice. Like if I was able to use these, I would, but I can't because of the cons. Let's talk about that. The dimensions of these little angles are absolutely impossible. I tried so many times. I mean, you can look at my Amazon history to see all the different orders. I mean, look at all of these. I bought like one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight different angle brackets off of Amazon. And I cannot get it right. Like, just like I was talking about earlier, your screw, your screw hole has to match, like your screw has to be able to fit into it. Um, and then it has to be able to fit into the T nut. And there's just so many moving parts that it's hard to, to get like, to get the dimensions right. I found the dimensions to be impossible. Um, another con, there's lots of waiting and then testing, right? Because you don't actually know if the dimensions on the Amazon listing are accurate because all this stuff is just made in China. You have to order it and then wait for it to get here. Then you have to test it. Then you have to be infuriated because you're stupid screw doesn't fit in the hole and like you wasted all this time and it's been four days or you ordered on a Friday and it didn't get here till Tuesday. So it drove myself nuts doing all this waiting for things to get here so I could test them. So that was a pain in the butt. And to be honest, I never did find parts that will work for me. So if you're able to find parts that work for you with little angled brackets you buy off of Amazon, then by all means, I was not able to do that. All right, so the last thing you can do if you really want to save some money with buying all of your angles and your brackets is to buy them from a manufacturer that's other than 8020. And like I said, 8020 is outrageously expensive, so you can consider someone else. Um, some of those manufacturers that I named earlier, they all sell brackets. Granger, Big Master Car, T Nuts, all those places sell all the different pieces that you need to work with aluminum extrusion. I bought all of mine from T Nuts, I will say a little bit reluctantly. Um, there are some pros and cons to this as well, and let's talk through that. So let's talk about pros first. So as far as pros go, you get exactly what you need, right? Um, because all of the parts are standardized, um, you get parts that are guaranteed to fit. So now I found this to be the case, especially on the T-Nuts website. Like they say which 8020 part, like their part correlates with, which is incredibly helpful when you're trying to figure out what parts to get. Um, so it ends up being incredibly easy just to buy from someone like T-Nuts. Another pro is that it's cheaper than 8020, like a lot cheaper than 8020. Now I couldn't find any angled brackets that I like. I did end up buying those from Amazon, but I'm gonna tell you exactly what parts that I got a little bit later. Uh, they do have different types of angle brackets and lots of stuff, and it's all way cheaper than 8020. As far as cons go, you still have to do some testing. I found that even though you buy things from T-Nuts, if you don't use like all of the combination parts exactly correctly, then you will still end up with parts that are not compatible. So for example, I bought some quarter 20 screws and standard T-Nuts and the screws were a half inch long, which ended up not working for my 10 series. Like the screws were just too long. And I was using those with these little simple uh, gusseted angle brackets. The screws were bouncing off of the bottom of the gutter here, right? And it was, the screws were too long. And I thought, oh, well, no problem. I can solve this. Let's put some washers in it. So I went to Home Depot and I got some washers. And that ended up not working either because um, 
because these little gusseted angle brackets are so small, when I put the washers in there, the screws bump together. So the screw heads like wouldn't fit inside of these gusseted angle brackets, right? So you can't win with this stuff, right? Like you have to get all the parts that are perfectly compatible. And one of the disadvantages of T-nuts is like some of their stuff still might not be perfectly compatible. So you still have to do some testing with that. You know, somewhat of a con, but not really a con is the stuff is still expensive. If you buy it from T-nuts, I mean, it's still gonna cost a lot more than like simple angle brackets off of Amazon would. Um, but like I said, it's cheaper than um, 80-20. And I guess a con to buying from someone like T-Nuts is you do have some limited options. I mean, you can see on their website, like they don't have a ton of different stuff for you to buy. Um, not, not a lot of different angles and those types of things. But still, I think the pros outweigh the cons. And like I said, that's what I ended up doing is I bought all my parts from T-Nuts. Okay, so we've talked about buying your angled brackets. Let's talk about actually buying the T-Nuts, like the part that is the T-Nut, not the T-Nuts brand. It's very confusing. So T-Nuts, I think, are even harder than your angle brackets. And like I said, it was such a pain in the butt to buy all these little things from Amazon and to find out they're not compatible with my screws and my T-Nuts. I found T-Nuts to be even harder to find, all right? And I think it's just because they're such a specific type of part. Not many people make them. So let me talk about some of the places that I looked where you can actually buy these things from. Okay, so obviously you can buy 8020 directly from the manufacturer. Um, they're still very, very expensive. A everything 8020 carries is incredibly expensive. Even their screws seem to be way overpriced for whatever reason. But the advantage is it's simple and all your parts are right there on the website. You can get exactly what you need. I mean, that is a pretty huge advantage. You can also buy them somewhere like Amazon. Amazon has some of these parts on there. Um, I did find for some reason the 20 series is by far the most common on Amazon and places like eBay and stuff. Everybody has the 20 series stuff, even though there's not that many versions of um, 80, 20 brackets like that are for the 20 series. It seems like Amazon and eBay, they like carry a ton of things that are compatible with the 20 series. So I guess that would be an advantage of using the 20 series. You can also look on eBay. eBay has lots of stuff as well. And again, 20 series is by far the most common. Some disadvantages to that, right? There's no reviews, like that's kind of hit or miss. Um, it's also gonna be a little hit or miss if the parts are truly compatible and the return policies are not amazing on eBay. So there is that to consider. Then lastly, just like you have with your brackets, you can buy them from somewhere like T-Nuts. Um, and those are near spec to parts. They're reasonably priced. That's what I did. And the limit, the options are a little limited as far as the types of T-Nuts they have. Um, but they do have parts that are like nearly perfectly compatible with um, real aluminum extrusion. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you learned something interesting about fasteners with aluminum extrusion. This is the second of three parts. And now in this next part, we're going to talk about uh, exactly what I use. If you do want to use the exact parts that we use just to kind of skip some of the technical jargon and just get straight to the straight to the business, then uh, you can do what I did and that'll be in the next video. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. And we'll get back to our build series as soon as possible. We'll see you next time.